Hey guys, it's Woody, and I am an exceptional nerd. So, um, leading into this, I'm going to try and keep this quick. I, I've been working with computers for a long time. I, I have a master's in comp sci. I, this is the sort of thing that I know about. There are people who know even more than me, I have no doubt. But uh, hopefully I can do this right and help you guys uh, get started with, with how to make your NAT open. Now, recently in Black Ops, they changed it so that it displayed what your NAT type was. They didn't actually change what your NAP type was, your, your network ad address translation, I'll explain that later, but they added it on in a display. So a lot of people became freshly aware of the fact that they had a problem, whereas before they may have been blissfully unaware. And this video is going to give you a little bit of a lesson on uh, what it is, what it does, what it means to you, and how to fix it. So let's get started. So first we're going to go a little bit of groundwork. Uh, what is an IP address? So every computer that is on the internet has an IP address. And uh, the way it's represented, you can see there, like I'm pinging biteme.com, its IP address is 63.251.171.80. My IP address is not very much un unlike your address of your house or your apartment or whatever. It's just a, a place on the internet that somebody can find it. And then there are all these complicated mechanisms that help translate that IP address into a name or translate that IP address into a set of directions so that your data can get from one computer to the other or in this case more likely a, an Xbox or a PlayStation or maybe even a PC to another host and um, uh, so that an IP address is just an address kinda like a house and uh, the internet, I'll say, to keep this simple, knows how to turn that IP address into either a name or a set of directions. And uh, the, it's actually a whole bunch of steps along the way, but I'm trying to, to keep this moving along. Let's talk about what network address translation is. So back in the olden days of the internet, if you had, say, five computers on your home network, then your ISP, like in this case it's probably Time Warner or the phone company, would give you five IP addresses. And, and you would literally literally have like five internet IP addresses and usually paid like an extra dollar or two for each one. The thing is, the amount of devices on the internet grew at such a rate that they could tell that it was obvious that they were going to start running out of IP addresses, at least for you know, IP version 4, but I won't get into that. What they did instead is they came up or, or they... Or, it got popular, network address translation. So uh, so here's the thing, and, and I hope I don't geek out too much on this. There are certain IP addresses, like anything starting with 192, 168 is a good example, anything starting with 10 is another, and, and there are others that are private IP addresses. These will never be given to like an IBM or Time Warner or whatever. And if you see one of these IP addresses, then you know that they are private. And what happens is your ISP gives your, I'll say cable modem, one real IP address, one IP address that the internet knows what to do with. And then inside you have a router and that router handles your network address translation and it converts that real IP address into a private one, which isn't really unreal, but let, let's, let's consider it that. And then... So all the traffic that you have on the internet going to your entire house is actually being funneled to that one real IP address. That cable modem probably is the one that has it assigned. And then you have a router on your, on your LAN, your, your local area network, that directs that traffic to all the devices uh, around your house. So that's what, that, what's, that is what network address translation is. But sometimes uh, certain ports are closed. So when data gets sent to your computer, your computer has a lot of programs listening for that data to arrive. Sometimes it's your browser, sometimes it's your Xbox, sometimes it's whatever. And those those things are called ports. So it, it's not like a human where you know I talk and it comes in your ears and everything gets funneled to your brain. Your computer has a whole bunch of different programs, a whole bunch of different brains listening. So each of them are listening on a different port. And what you need to do is you need to set up port forwarding or you need to put your Xbox or PlayStation on the DMZ, which I'll get into in a second. But to recap what I just said, network address translation changes that real public IP address that your ISP, your internet service provider is giving you into a local private IP address that's only not, that only means something to the other computers on your LAN. And then your router's job is to forward that internet data to the appropriate uh, port and computer or Xbox or device on your local area network. That's what network translation, network address translation is all about. And that's what's bringing us our complexity. So let's talk about opening ports right now. All right. 
if you're going to set up, if you're going to open ports in your Xbox for your, or in your router for your Xbox or whatever, then you need to uh, <laughs> you need to give your Xbox or your PlayStation a static IP address. Now I'm going to do this on my Xbox, but for the PlayStation, the the setup is pretty similar. I hope that by looking at me doing it on the Xbox, it gives you a good feel for how to do it on the PlayStation. The PlayStation asks a few extra questions like, do you want to customize your MTU and, and just choose automatic on, on those things. So I'm going to press center button on my controller. I'm going to go to system settings and then network settings. So when you're here, choose the appropriate network. Hopefully you're wired. If you're wired, you're always going to get better network connections than you would if you were not. So, um, so I, I hope that you guys are wired. If you are wireless, either think about switching to wired or just understand that it's never going to be quite as good as it would have been if you were wired. All right, so I'm going to go to configure network and uh, choose this top one. Yours probably says automatic on IP settings, but uh, if you want to you know, set this thing up so that your IP address never changes, then you need to set that to manual. I'm choosing manual here and IP address. Now, <laughs> for most of you guys, the answer is going to be either 192.168.1 something or 192.168.0 something. It would have been wise to look at the, you can even hit back here, and, and look at what the IP address is at the moment, back here. And if it's, if it's you know, one something in that third, what's called the octet after the 168, then just keep it at that. If it's zero something, then keep it at that. Different routers have different standards, and uh, for mine, it, it's one. So and then go in here and enter an IP address. I made mine 192.68.1.200. 200 because it's a nice high number and I'm unlikely to have 200 devices on my personal network so that it actually starts handing that out in, you know, via DHCP, which is, uh, I won't dive into that, but uh, choose a nice high number, one that, that's higher than you're going to get in, um, in real life, but don't make it over, say, 254. I think that's as, as high as you want that thing to be. So, uh, so give it a little number. 200 would work. I think you won't run into any trouble for that. And that's your IP address. Enter that in. Your subnet mask. In almost every case for a home network, it's you know triple two fifty five dot zero, and and that'll get you going. Uh, and then for gateway, uh, again, this is most likely going to be one ninety two one sixty eight one one or one ninety two one sixty eight zero one. So in, in some cases, it's 254 as that last number. Like I know AT&T does that sometimes. So look at your gateway address that it was uh, be pr previously and then just you know copy it because this isn't going to change as you set up your static IP address. But the point here is to give your Xbox or your PS3 a static IP so that when you open ports for that IP address, it keeps working. If you were to just use the automatically assigned one via DHCP, at some point along the, along the way, you're likely to have that IP address change and then you know your NAT type would go back to moderate or strict, which is not what we want. So now that your Xbox is configured with a static IP address, we can open the uh, ports for that IP address and fix your, um, fix your strict or moderate NAT. Now this is what it looks like for my router interface for my Xbox. If you have a PS3, then your ports are gonna be a little bit different and um, if you have a PC, then it's going to be different yet. But this is what it's like for my Xbox. Another thing is, if you know your router is likely to be different, you might have a D-Link, you might have a Belkin, you might have you know a Linksys or something like that. But uh, there's an answer for that. You can go to portforward.com, and I'll throw the link in the description. And uh, uh, in there, they have like step by step and, and read the, all the words carefully. I know when people read web pages, they don't tend to read every word carefully. Read all the words carefully and follow the steps. And it will tell you how to open the ports for your favorite game for your router. And it's really complete. I will warn you, there's one page, like I think after you choose your game or after you choose your router, where it offers for you to purchase that configuration. If you just look at the top right on that page, it'll say like skip this ad and go to you know the, the content that you're looking for and, and look for that. So if it looks like it's trying to get money from you, well, it, it probably is, but you can get around that and, and do it yourself just by looking in the top right of that page and you'll find where to, uh, uh, where to skip that ad and, and move on. But anyway, this is what it looks like for my ports. I wish there was a, a better way for me to handhold you through the setup for your router, but it's also different that uh, that it's a challenge and I, I just can't do it. But um, anyway, this is what it's like uh, on mine. So just look for that link in the description to portforward.com and, and that'll help walk you through it. So 
if your NAT is set to strict or moderate, then a lot of guys have this idea that their bullets are going to register slower. Or that's the trouble that they're going to have. But that's not really accurate. Um, if your NAT, if, if the data is not getting to your Xbox, then certain things break. It isn't the notion that some things get slowed down and suddenly you'll become better at the game. When your NAT's not working, sometimes you can't hear certain people or those certain people can't hear you. Uh, sometimes you can't uh, just communicate with a with a host or join a certain game or private party, or those people in that private party can't join you. Uh, typically, that closed net is what the problem is that the traffic's getting dropped somewhere along the way. It's not that um, you know the, your your bullets are taking too long to show. Right, that's lag. That's latency. That's not what closed ports do. What, what closed ports do is certain aspects of your online gaming experience just become broken. Uh, compared to slow, which is not what a closed NAT does. So I thought I'd point that out. One thing I did want to say is this says in that second to last bullet point, you shouldn't have a NAT problem if you have a wired modem connection. And what they're talking about is connecting your Xbox or PlayStation directly to your cable modem, and they're right. You know, that, that, that <laughs> You won't have any trouble at all if you do that. It's when you have this network address translation layer in the middle that in some cases you have these troubles. And uh, anyway, so th this is what happens, uh, this is what breaks when your NAT is strict or moderate. You just can't get into certain games or, you know, maybe you're in, you're, you'd be a really bad choice to get host uh, in, in Call of Duty series because, um, you know, you can't communicate with some people. They're getting bad uh, connections and, and you probably get booted as host if that happens, if too many guys are getting those red bars. So um, anyway, that's what that does. And before I close this one out, I'm going to throw up this little chart to... Uh, just so these are some common subnets. So remember, I talked about how it's it's most likely 192.168.01 or 11. Well, you know, here's some guidelines. Uh, Netgear uses both D-Link, Cisco Link, Sys, Belkin, etc. So um, I, I thought I'd throw this up there since I found it and give you guys a little hint on how to set your uh, static IP address on your Xbox or PS3 based on which modem or wireless modem, or which router or wireless router you're using for your home network. So that's a, a little overview of what network tra address translation is, what open, strict, and moderate means to you in your gaming experience. And I hope that this has been useful. I'm going to throw a link to portforwarding.com in the description. If your NAT type is already open, don't change it. Don't ask around. You're not going to, you know, it's not going to make your bullets register faster. But if your NAT type is moderate or strict, then uh, go for it. And, and I think it'll improve your online gaming experience.